Okay, Mr. Chairman, we are now live. Uh, thank you, Neil. Um, welcome to the virtual meeting of the North Application Planning Committee in the London Borough of Hillingdon. This is a virtual meeting. It is also being broadcast simultaneously on the Council's YouTube channel, Hillingdon, London. My name is Councillor Henry Higgins and I'm the chairman of this meeting. Online housekeeping first. Please ensure any mobile phones around you are on silent or off. If wearing a headset, ensure the microphone is away from your mouth to avoid noise. Uh, please keep microphone muted when not speaking and then unmute to speak. Only one person may speak at a time and as the chairman, I will call those to speak. You all have your little hands on the top of your screens. Can you please press those if you wish to speak during when, when I ask? I'll do attendance roll call first. Councillor Morgan, my vice chairman. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. I'm present. Thank you. Councillor Dot. Good evening, Chairman. I'm here. Councillor Hagger. Good evening, Chair. I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Kaufman. Good evening, Chairman. I'm here. Councillor Melvin. Yes, good evening, Chairman. I'm here. Uh, Councillor Oswald, my opposition lead. Yeah, uh, good evening, uh, Chairman. I'm here. Uh, Councillor Singh. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm present. And Councillor Yarrow. Good evening, Chairman. I'm here. I will now also present the officers tonight's meeting. Planning Officer James Wells. Good evening, Chair. Thank you. Head of Planning, James Rogers. Uh, good evening, Chairman. I'm here. Uh, Transport Policy and Planning, Alan Tilly. Good evening, Chairman. I'm here. Uh, planning Enforcement, Des Desmond Adam Equire. Good evening, Chairman. I'm present. Thank you very much. And legal advice, Glenn Egan. Good evening, Chairman. I'm present. And not least, the most important officer, all Democratic Service Officer, Neil Fraser. Present, Chairman. Thank you. In terms of any technical meeting control, if any councillor leaves the virtual meeting partway through for a period of time, IG lost its connection. I will continue this meeting unless we're not quorum, which is three councillors. It's important any councillor who does leave the meeting for a period of time. Will not be able to vote. Is there any declarations of interest in matters coming before us? No. OK. Uh, do we um, agree the minutes of the last meeting? I'll take your silence as yes. Thank you. Uh, matters notified in advance or urgent and item 14 added is located on agenda B. And to confirm public and private reports. Part one public reports will be recorded for the live stream and part two we will been or we off live recording uh, the first item is item six james can you take us through this please thank you chairman so um on the screen now should be item six two seven nine swakeley's road Ickenham. that's correct um, James, sorry, do you want to just press the present button in the top right so that it goes full screen? Thank you. Sorry, Neil. Thank you. Uh, is that clear now? Yes, it's perfect. Thank you. As I was saying, um, item six is 279 Swakely's Road, Ickenham. This uh, slide shows the uh, location of the site. The application proposes the erection of a two story building with habitable roof space to provide six two bed and one three bed flats with parking and amenity space uh, following the demolition of the uh, existing dwelling. The following slides show uh, an, a plan of the existing um, dwelling at 279. Uh, and then this shows 
uh, it's described as a concept plan, but essentially it shows uh, a plan of the proposed building uh, with car parking to the rear of the site. And then we have in more detail the ground floor plan, the first floor plan, the accommodation, the roof, which is the three bed flat and then the roof plan. Um, then we have the existing um, elevations, the elevations of the existing dwelling on site. And then these are the north and south elevations to help members. Um, the south elevation is the elevation that will be facing uh, Warren Road. And then we have the east and west elevations. And then uh, the proposed sections. Going on from there, we have the following photographs. There's the aerial view of the site. Um, this is a, a view of the rear of the existing property, uh, another view of the existing property. And then if I click through these, um, probably of, of most interest to members is um, this uh, slide, which shows uh, the next door property 279 Swakeley's Road and then just further into the distance, uh, sorry, 277 Swakeley's Road and then further into the distance 275. I'll just take you back uh, to the main elevations. Um, following consultation, 18 representations were received, including uh, three petitions objecting to the proposal. Um, after this presentation, I understand Neil Fraser will read out representations from two petitioners and the agent. With regards to the proposed development, um, as set out in the report, it's considered to be an uncharacteristic form of development that would have a detrimental impact on the character, appearance and visual amenities of the area. Um, the proposed car parking area and hard surfacing um, taken together with the footprint of the proposed building leaves very limited space for boundary planting uh, and replacement trees and would again prejudice the character and appearance of the area. The proposed layout um, fails to provide on-site uh, amenity space of a sufficient quantity and quality. Uh, no clear information has been submitted uh, to explain why no lift access has been provided and finally the proposal is likely to result in um, a loss of privacy for occupiers at 277 Swakeley's uh, road by reason of overlooking. Um, to help members uh, with regards to the presentations uh, Neil will be making shortly, officers are aware that the applicant's agent has concerns regarding uh, what they consider to be um, a lack of proactive engagement. In response to those concerns, we would highlight as set out in the report that there are five different refusal reasons um, as identified in the report and minor changes to the scheme would not have resulted in a favorable officer recommendation. So for the reasons set up in the report, the application is recommended for refusal. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, James. Neil, um, would you like to read out the petitioners? I don't know whether we have a councillors as well, but uh, whatever you've got, if you could do that, that'd be much helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, as, as James mentioned, uh, we've received two written submissions from petitioners objecting to the application and one uh, submission from the, the applicant's agent. So I'll take you through the, uh, the petitioners first. So first petitioner statement. The plans for two, number 279 Sweetley's Road are not compatible with the local area. The proposed building is on those corner site with the further road to the rear. As such, it is particularly prominent when viewed from three public sides and would stick out like a carbuncle as it would be the first building the visitor might espy as they sweep off Swakely's roundabout. It's too intrusive by reason of its scale and prominence, not harmonising with the character of the rest of this section of road, which is still residential in character with pleasant mainly two-storey family homes. Its broad footprint is inconsistent with neighbouring houses, which were, both, uh, which were built in line at both front and rear. Indeed, next door at number 277 would be badly overlooked and lose their privacy. 
The proposed flats themselves are architecturally bland and would offer only a poor quality of accommodation. The rooms are too small, being neither spacious nor gracious. There is no lift access, nor indeed step-free access into the dwellings above ground floor level, so it would not be accessible for wheelchair users and visitors. The surroundings seem considerably short of the minimum amount of space requirements. The landscaped communal gardens nearest to Swakers Road would be confined to the ground floor flats only. The planned hard landscape at the back of the site removes nearly all the soft landscaping and a few replacement trees and a bit of boundary planting are not replacements for a decent garden. This rear area would be over busy with the designated parking spaces, well short anyway of what most people would deem necessary, not to mention other artefacts which are not covered in the plans. Where is the provision of amenity space for each flat to have external bin stores, general lockable storage areas? Within a few years, everyone is urged to have electric cars, which would require not just two points, but mostly electric vehicle charging points. Even healthier would be cycling, also seriously encouraged, so there should be secure bicycle storage on site. These requirements should all be housed safely and discreetly on site, so as not to ruin the local street scene. The planned siding and concentration would raise noise and air quality issues. Whilst the Highway Authority apparently considers any additional vehicle movements to be marginal in traffic generation terms, residents strongly object due not just to the additional traffic, but the clear problem of exiting the site, which would be hazardous to other drivers and to pedestrians, especially those heading to Vine and School down Warren Road. There is very little additional parking nearby for second cars and visitors. This is why the neighbours along Sweetley's Road, whether long-term residents or those more recently welcomed to this area, are united in requesting that this controversial planning application be refused. Uh, the second statement from the petitioner. As well as the objections listed in the various petitions, e.g. out of character, too big for the area, concerns about parking and traffic, we are very concerned that granting permission for vehicular access from Spakely's Road properties onto Silver Birch Close will set a precedent which will turn our quiet, safe cul-de-sac into a noisier, busier road and will reduce the amount of available parking space for those SPC residents who don't have off-street parking. Last spring, we had months of noise and repeated large deliveries for a garden revamp in one of the Spakely's Road houses. The buildings even left a car side delivery of bricks in the road for at least a week before moving them. There were daily deliveries of takeaway food for the workers, workmen's vans parking resident spaces, blocking access to the garages, etc. Then in the summer, there was the same upheaval with a massive marquee, plus all of the associated catering suppliers for what we think was a wedding reception. Another successful planning application for one of the other houses there is allowing access for deliveries and site traffic, again effectively turning Silver Birch close to a service road for Swakeley's Road. If permanent rural access from Swakeley's Road from SPC is granted for this development, this could encourage other Swakeley's Road residents to do the same, which would really affect us. And finally in this, we have the statement from the applicant's agent, which states, Thank you for this opportunity to submit this representation. I am the agent of this application for seven flats to replace the existing house. There are five reasons given for refusal, all of which are flawed and or capable of resolution. My comments on these reasons are as follows. Reason one, scale and prominence. Pre-application advice given for a nine flat scheme 30% larger than the current one did not suggest that the bulk or height were unacceptable. This is a design point, but is not apparently based on design officer's advice. The footprint as proposed is only 6% larger than that of the existing building. The proposal is compliant in terms of density. The proposed building is set further from Swakeley's Road than the existing house. Reason two, insufficient soft landscaping. The area of soft landscape proposed is in fact a 20% increase on the existing planted area. The scheme is compliant with DMHB 18, despite the statement here. Reason three, lack of outdoor amenity space. Compliant balconies are provided for upper floor flats. Compliant private gardens are provided for ground floor flats. Additional soft landscape areas of 105 square meters are also provided for upper floor flats as required. The proposal is fully compliant in this respect. Reason four, lack of a lift. A lift can be added without external alterations. This can and should be dealt with by condition. Reason five, loss of privacy for 277 Swakey's Road. There are three upper floor windows looking towards the next house. All of them can be omitted since the rooms concerned have other windows. This can and should be dealt with by condition. We paid for pre-application advice, including a meeting, but the meeting was not offered. We were advised to withdraw the first application on the basis that we would be given a copy of the draft officer's report that, do that document was never issued. Despite repeated requests, we received no feedback on the current application until the report was issued. This matter has not been dealt with fairly and transparently, and the reasons given for refusal are, as demonstrated above, incorrect or capable of resolution. I therefore request that the decision be deferred so that any problems can be properly discussed and resolved with officers. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Neil. Um, James, can you stop presenting for me, please? That's much better. Thank you very much. Right. Um, we're going to uh, actually. James. 
Rogers, that last comment from the agent. Do you want to comment on that first before we go ahead? Um, in terms of the kind of uh, what I call the duty to be proactive, uh, I think Neil kind of answered this at the end of his presentation. If, if, if there's a scheme before the planning committee that through very minor changes can be made acceptable, uh, it's kind of encouraged for the local planning authority to try and make it acceptable. But uh, as James summarised, we've got five refusal reasons and we don't think uh, very minor changes would make the scheme it, it, ex acceptable in this instance. Um, with regard to some of the other points made by the agent, it's difficult for me to respond because they were sort of merging together comments on a pre-application, a previous application and a current application. So if it's OK, Chairman, I will just s stick with my first point. That, that is absolutely fine. I just wanted to uh, make sure that um, we've covered our bases and offices a thing. I'm going to open it straight to the floor now. Councillor Oswald. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, yeah. I uh, the report's correct, and, and also the petitioners are correct as well. You know, it's just not a good fit, is it? Um, I don't know. I think it's a, a good report and it should be refused, and I'll move the officer's recommendation, Chairman. Thank you. That is nice and quick. Thank you very much. Councillor Hagger. Yes, thank you, Chair. I mean, I completely agree. I think it just says it all there, really, why we're refusing it, inadequate car space, traffic overlooking, it's all in the report. Um, I'm happy to second that, Chair. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you very much. Councillor Morgan. Oh, you you put your hand down. Councillor Kaufman. No, I'll put my hand down as well, Henry. OK, thank you. OK. Um, OK, uh, there's still two people. You, your hand is still up. Councillor Morgan, your hand's still up as well. I'm going to put it down, but it's uh, <laughs> okay. It's all they've all gone down, so that's good. Okay, where, where so, I can, Jim, and I'm lowering the hands on behalf of the councillors. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> They're very nice little hands, actually. Now, but anyway, <laughs> I'm dying to let's go back to the thing. Um, we go straight to the vote, Councillor Morgan. Henry. Oh, Mr. Councillor Yarrow. Oh, oh, sorry, clearly. Councillor Yarrow. My hand is waving away, but it's ha it happened at the last meeting. It doesn't seem to make any any inference to your to yourself. Uh, it, you're not seeing it. No, because you've got on your screen, uh, David. You've got a, a a little button that has a hand on it. Yes, and I press it, and it shows it waving on my screen, but it doesn't reflect. I I apologise, <laughs> Neil, because I can't see Councillor Yarra. Could you uh, next time he puts his hand up, I'll um. I, I can't either, but I'll I'll do my best to kind of spotlight him and keep an eye on him. <laughs> if I may. Before before on the yes. old system, you would all be there, but some of you are not all right. here anyway. And so I put, I just, okay. so, anyway, Councillor Yarrow, have you yes. got something you'd like to add? Uh, just no, no, nothing really to add. I think there are five perfectly good reasons for rejecting this. What I would like to say to the officers, and it's not part of rejecting this, could somebody give us an indication of what the percentage of flatted accommodation is being built between Harville Road and the and Swate and the roundabout? Because there's, it seems to be every house there is getting converted into flats. I thought we had a figure of around 10 percent. Where are we now at that for the future? Good point. Good point. Should, should I answer that, Chairman? Yes, please, James. Your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the problem is that Swakey's Road is so long in effect we have to break it into various sections to apply the 10% rule uh, and so what the officers have uh, so there are bit places on Swakey's Road where the 10% is exceeded but we don't think at this particular location so uh, you are absolutely right to an extent uh, there are parts of Swakley's Road where the 10% rule would actually be applicable. We don't feel uh, if we do the count uh, either side of this property that the 10% rule is exceeded. Okay. okay. Can we just, can, for, for future reference, uh, James, can you let us know what the breakdown of Swakley's is? So we, we're, we're on the understanding, not, not for this meeting, but... It, 
Yeah, it, it's rather tricky because most roads are under under one kilometre in length. So yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously it, we'll it, keep in our yeah, so if we had, say, Fairfield Road, which I know is beyond 10% in North Uxbridge Ward, then uh, we'd be able to give you a figure. Swake yeah. Lees is much more difficult because the figure varies along the length of the road. And okay. that, that, that's the problem. OK, fine. OK, I hope that's a, an answer for you there, Councillor Yarrow. Um, I'll go straight to the Did vote you? now. Uh, Councillor Morgan. I'm for the officer's recommendations. We can only go by what's in front of us and not what um, uh, the applicant is intending. So definitely for the officer's recommendations. Thank you very Thank you, much. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Dot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I support the officer recommendations. Thank you. Councillor Hager, second. Thank you. And Councillor Kaufman. I go for the officer's recommendation, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Melvin. Yes, I'm for the officer's recommendation, uh, Chairman. Thank you, Thank you very much. Councillor Oswald proposed. Councillor Singh. Uh, for Chairman, I um, uh, support the officer's recommendation. Thank you very much. And Councillor Yarrow. For the officer's recommendation. Thank you very much. Um, Neil, that's, uh, everybody's voted for the, uh, for the officer's recommendation. Do you agree? Okay, that application is refused, Councillor. Thank you very much. If we go to item seven, Wednesday High Road, East Coat, Hill, Northwood Hills Ward. Um, James Wells, would you like to present, please? Thank you, Chairman. As has been said, this is item seven, Wednesday High Road in East Coat. This slide shows the location um, of the site. Uh, the application uh, proposes the erection of a part two story, part single story rear extension, um, raising the ridge height and conversion of the roof from hip to gable with gable in windows. Uh, it includes the conversion of the uh, integral garage to habitable use and alterations, including new windows um, on the existing side elevations. The following slides um, show first the plans of the existing dwelling, the loft and roof plan of the dwelling and then the elevations of the dwelling. These plans show the proposed ground and first floor plans um, as extended, uh, the roof plan as extended and then the elevations as extended. Going on from there, uh, there's an aerial photograph and then um, this slide shows the uh, existing photograph of the existing dwelling uh, with photographs of the surrounding area, uh, the rear of the existing dwelling and various other photographs. I'll just take us back um, to the proposed elevations. Following consultations, uh, two representations were received along with a petition objecting to the proposal and objections from the Northwood Hills Residents Association and the East Coat Village Conservation Panel. After this presentation, Neil Fraser will uh, read out representations from a petitioner. Um, the proposal includes uh, a part single storey, part two storey rear extension across the full width of the property, which would measure approximately eight metres in depth at ground floor, um, set beneath a crown roof of about 3.65 metres in height. Above this would be part first floor extension of approximately three metres in depth, set beneath a roof raised from about 8.3 metres to approximately 8.7 metres and including side hip to gable conversions. Um, as members can see from the um, slide on the screen, this is a substantial proposed addition to the original property. Um, the excessive depth and bulk of the proposal would fail to appear um, as a subordinate addition to the original dwelling and would be out of keeping with the architectural character and appearance of the wider street scene. For the reasons set out in the report, 
this application is recommended for refusal. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, James. Uh, over to you, Neil. Um, I'm glad it's you, not me, but uh, can you read out the petitions and uh, agents and uh, any councillors if, if there is any? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, just the uh, the one statement from the petitioner uh, this time. So, uh, yet again, we are confronted with a planning application for a form of residential development that is disproportionately large and out of keeping with the adjacent houses. The applicant wishing to raise the roof and extend the property some 8.4 metres beyond its original building line, excluding the conservatory. The proposed extension is overbearing and unbalanced, having a disproportionately large roof with, the, with new roof lights, three in the front, two in the back and one at each side. The roof line and proposed rendered finishes are also out of keeping with the street scene, whilst the inclusion of side windows is likely to affect the privacy of four adjoining properties. The significantly enlarged second floor roof space is identified in the plans as being for storage, but has clearly been designed for future conversion as habitable rooms. If the applicant wishes to design a roof space with a view to future habitation, perhaps it should be included with the main application. The applicant has provided the land registry title plan, but not a site location plan showing the development in context. By using the land registry title plan from 1957 instead of an ordnance survey plan, the potential impacts of surrounding buildings are significantly underplayed as many of the neighbouring properties were not built at the time. The minimum that might be expected is a red line plan prepared on an ordnance survey based map from this century. Contrary to the applicant's claims, the house is already very visible from the High Road Eastcote, Cheney Street and Birchmead Avenue and the Eastcote Conservation Area. We would request that the council request a townscape assessment to test the degree of impact to the setting of these conservation areas to demonstrate that there is no impact. We would urge the council to refuse the application that was submitted on the grounds that it is a disproportionately large and obtrusive form of development that is both out of keeping with the surrounding area and will detract significantly from the, tree, excuse me, from the street scene. We would also request that should the council be minded to approve a second floor extension with multiple windows for storage only, that the application is conditioned to ensure that it is not converted to habitable rooms. The position of the windows and potential to overlook neighbouring properties cannot be tested in planning terms if the proposed use is storage. Once built, its future conversion could be carried out under building regulations approval, thereby bypassing planning law. This form of creeping development is both unwelcome and an abuse of planning law. In the event that the applicant resubmits a smaller planning application under permitted development, we would also expect the building line to be taken from the original building line, which corresponds to the existing living room and not the conservatory, which is itself an extension. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. I will go straight to the vote. And for the first time, I have no hand. So maybe I should go to Day Council Yarrow. You, got, you wanted to say something? No? Okay. Councillor Morgan. Oh, David's come. Hang Thank on. Thank you very much. No, yeah, hang on. I'll put the hand down so you get. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I actually agree with the, the Northwood Hills and East Coast conservation area um, on this building that is totally out of character with the other um, houses in that area, you know, especially the street scene. Um, so I'm totally in favour of the officer's recommendation and will propose it. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Melvin. Yes, I, I agree. I was just going to second that. Um, I agree much. with the officers, yeah. Thank you very much. Councillor Oswald, do you got anything to add? No, not now. It's been seconded. Thank you very much. Councillor Kaufman, have you got anything to add? Uh, no, not now, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll go straight to the vote then. Um, Councillor Morgan proposed. Councillor Dot. Uh, four chairman. Thank you. Councillor Hagger. Four chair. Thank you. Councillor Kaufman. Four chairman. Thank you. Councillor Melvin seconded. Councillor Oswald. Curse on the mute button. Four chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Singh. Four chairman. Thank you. Councillor Yarrow. Four chairman. Thank you. Well, next time, hopefully, John, it will actually be in the Civic, so you won't have any problems with the curse of the the, the mute button anymore. Okay, I, yeah, Neil, I'm, that's a I'm full, like, fully, fully agreed. Is that agreed? Yes, that was unanimously refused, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we go to item eight, which is it's the quarterly monitoring report 106. 
Um, the SEAL report will come to us next time, uh, but this is just for noting. I, Neil, do we have to have a, a vote on this? Uh, no, you don't need to have a vote, Chairman. Um, it's, uh, obviously, if members have any questions, then now is the time to pose them to the officers. If not, then uh, it can resolve to, to note. Yeah. Okay. No, noted, noted, Chairman. Noted, Mr. Chairman. No. Thank you very much. We will now cease part one and we'll go into part two. I'll wait for Neil to cut the live feed. Thank you.